Welcome back to SOS. I'm Staff MBA. This is, uh, I'm drinking out of my Darth Vader skull cap today. Alright. You gotta be a real man to drink out of Darth Vader skull. I'm just saying. It happens. It's true. So, uh, I'm gonna be using no electricity today. I'm, I'm gonna try and drill this out with no electricity. And uh, means I'm I've got hurdy gurdies and stuff. I'm going to talk about tools, no power, and I'm making a fail rod. And real quick, I like from this sheath here. I made a sheath a few days back. This one here. And uh, if anybody wants this, let me know, and uh, we'll talk about it. But uh, just email me about it. So this is my fail rod. This is my blade. There you go. It's Damascus. Damascus machete. And there's your uh, Mora blade. I actually got this to fit. It's perfect. I, okay, enough about this. Let's talk about this. It's nice. All right. Uh, making one of these, I always get asked the question about drilling these out and placing a ferro rod. So I wanted to start one today. I went through a ton of this. This is heartwood, fatwood, sweetwood, ladder knot, whatever you want to call it. It's in all kinds of countries. Russia, Germany, Sweden, here, South Carolina, all over. But I don't need all this today. And uh, I've got my tools set up. Let's pull you over here and we'll talk. Okay, so I've got my uh, fatwood from Canada all over places right and uh, I was looking for a decent piece you want something that's like this you can't just go to Walmart and get a piece that looks like this now I could do a handle that's this ridiculous size for a ferro rod nobody wants to carry that around with them that's that's enormous so I've got these options now stuff that you find it like let me move over here at like Wally World and stuff they sell fat wood at Walmart dude. Uh, it's you don't want it. It's not that great. It works if you've got a fireplace or something. But if you're trying to make something out of it or some really good stuff, you're not going to... Like, this isn't... Uh, this is something local, basically. We've got it around my neck of woods as well. You can find it. It's, it's a resource, man. I mean, you can find it all over the place. But some people can't find it, so they, they go and... Uh, they just buy it. It's sometimes you know it's easier that way. It's, it doesn't cost that much, and it keeps the chain of life going, right? So I've got this piece here that I like. I liked this piece. Me and this piece here had a connection at first. Like I talked to this piece for like an hour, and I finally decided that it didn't like me. So I like this piece. This piece kind of did the whole like I am group kind of thing. So I've got this one, and. This now you could use a metal drill bit on tasks like this. I prefer not to, so I just wanted to throw it out there. And any of you that have a file, get go and get yourself some tools. You can go all sorts of places. That, it's a file for wood. It's not going to dull like you know using it for steel. So if you did go to Harbor Freight, let's just say because people hate this name. If you did go to Harbor Freight to get yourself a file, this one didn't come from there. I bought, this is actually one I got from like Sears or something. I can't remember. But this is a good tool. This is Stanley. This is a good chisel. Like if you need to chisel something, I've just got this out just in case I need it. But uh, get yourself good files. I, that's, I'm just throwing it out there that I usually don't buy stuff like this. Files, drill bits. Get good drill bits. They'll last you a lifetime. This is a more expensive drill bit. It's going to last me the rest of my life. It, it's going to take a while. It, it, it cuts wood, okay? It doesn't... It's not for steel. But this is a hurdy-gurdy. A lot of... <laughs> this is a drill. This is a drill. Anyway. And the way you want to tighten one of these up, you want to put your thumb... You put your thumb right about here. That's what this groove is cut for. A lot of people don't know this, but your thumb goes there, your thumb goes here, and then you can, it depends on which side you're on. If you're going to do it, undo, undo it or, or tighten it. 
but you just you come back like this to tighten it up like that there you go so you loosen it up down here and take your bit out and move on with your life uh, the bottom end down here does turn off like that you can put uh, tools in here like uh, screwdriver tips drill bits whatever in the handle that's that's kind of why they did that I didn't know if you knew that I figured I'd tell you but this is made in America this will work without electricity obviously I was a joke I was just joking all right so whatever this one ratchets now I like this one because this one's kind of uh, you've got your uh, uh, you've got your speed handles and you've got your hurdy gurdies this is a speed handle okay now it's more of a it's kind of, it's not the typical speed handle okay most speed handles don't have like like this setup here it's it's more of a snap-on type thing it you know what I mean but this is another US company as well made in the USA says it right there so but it ratchets okay so you can do this number here then you can flip it all the way around go the other direction like that then you can flip it like this and then it locks totally okay but that's usually so you can get your your drill bit out okay but these work great for well that's actually a handyman stanley handyman just so you know stanley is a lot of their stuff i'm not sure if any of their stuff is made in another country those of you looking for american products i always do i try to stay away from the other stuff but i do bring it to the show for those of those those people that do you know buy stuff on the cheap so okay enough said all right so i need to take this and this and marry them together and if you're looking for a ferrule rod go to ebay and this is where i get mine from this was i think four dollars and it yeah four dollars so like those little tiny ones that you buy they're more than five dollars at like walmart or something but i can go to ebay and get this ferrule rod which is a half inch it's half by, I think it's, where's my measuring tape? I don't want to lie to you. I think it's half by five. No measuring tape. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I don't lie. Half by five. I was right. So it's a half inch. Yep. Half inch. Uh, half by five. So we got a half by five. So I would need a half drill bit. And... That's pretty much the same size as that drill bit. That's a monster, huh? So that will last you a lifetime almost of striking fires if you do it right. All right. You can use a vise. I'm going to probably pop this into a vise. Go ahead and make my holes, and then we'll start shaping this thing to how I want it to look. But as you can see, it's got a lot of nice rings. It's nice and sappy. Very sappy, actually. And uh, now we can... Go ahead and make our ferrule rod. Some wackadoo out there probably probably still thinks I work in a basement and don't realize this is an actual shop. People are weird. Hey man, you work in your garage? Is that all you do? I I actually actually have other things I have to do besides make videos, people. But I use my might use my workplace for this, for this stuff as well all right so i just find the center of this good thing using a uh hurdy-gurdy or a speed handle is you can take your time and you don't cut too crazy fast see how nice and slow i can do that and it's still cutting it just fine and i don't have to go super fast and if i go super fast into this thing I'm going to end up, see now it's starting to, the drill bit starting to straighten up. That way I can get the right amount cut. Now look, folks, I'm not using any electricity right now. I have to remind people that. It's good to do it this way. What if it's one of those grid down type things, right? Ha ha ha, grid down. Now you want to collect all this up. That's, that's some good fire tender. I'm just saying. Uh, wouldn't put a put a spark near here, right? All right, so I got this side. There's my hole. So I got a nice hole there. And you just take take your uh, your ferrule rod, and it fits right in there, right? Just like that. 
perfect. Now, what do I do next? So, if I want to put it in there, let's see, it's my super glue. All right, I take my super glue and I just spray it all inside there, just like that, right? And then I just cram that in there, set it down, done. But first, before I even get into all that stuff, I need to make another hole. Because I need to make a hole straight through so I can uh, hang this off of something. I need to be able to put a uh, lanyard through it. I figured I would show people this because I was getting asked a lot of questions about it. Well, how do you do that? You know, well, how do you do that? I'd like to know how somebody did this, right? I'd like somebody to show me. Show me. All right. Once again, no power. I'm using a hurdy gurdy. This should be real simple. Uh, hurdy gurdy is a lot faster. You can pick up the speed a little bit more. I might switch over. I don't know if I want this real good or not. Let me lock down my vise before it starts sliding all over the place. Oh, yeah, we'll go the wrong way. Here we go. Tighten up. There we go. Oh, there it goes. Come on now. Boom. No power. All right. Oh, good. I didn't. I didn't blow out the back end either. That's good. Nice smooth hole. All right. That's that's for my lanyard. That's for my ferro rod. The rest of this just has to get cleaned up. Now, what I would do here. You can, you can choose to do this however, because I'm, I'm going to be taking a lot of this stuff off anyways, but I don't want to damage it. But I do kind of want to put this in here. Give her a crank. Not too much. Don't get crazy. You're going to end up losing a lot of this stuff. I just want to see how my chisel will work on it. I like to try tools out before I start pulling out like razor blades and things like that but just like that you just give it a shake but you don't have to I'm not doing anything fancy today so I mean now I'll probably get in here and sand a lot of this stuff off I just need to chip off the outer layer and then I'll give it a nice pretty sand. You know what I mean? Gotta say pretty, right? Pretty, rainbow, unicorns, all that. Anyways, I'm gonna work my way around this. And then you I just wanna prove you know prove to you that that's that's how that works. So you, you want to do that. Then the next step for you would be something like this. Use this end, it's got the round side to it. Uh, I sometimes use the flat end, so I mean, I'll show you what happens, how it starts to look, look at that, nice smooth, nice smooth surface there, but I'm going to go up here. Do the same thing. Look at that. It's all cleaning up. It's looking nice and smooth. It's that fast. It doesn't take long. Most people would probably think, you know, something like this would take forever. But, uh, it's polishing it up for the most part. So I'll drop it back in here. Don't press, like I said, don't press too tight down on it. See, it's already starting to take shape. 
Now, basically, I've just got to go around the whole thing. Now, one thing I like to do is the uh, this edge. See how I kind of rounded it? I rounded that right there. I'm going to basically do the same thing all the way around, kind of like that, and round it out. And you can take sandpaper and, and polish it up and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish working my way around it. Uh, same technique. I'm not doing anything any different. I'm going to clean it up, and uh, I'll bring you back, and you'll see what it looks like. Okay, so right now I'm just sort of I'm going around it with uh, a straight razor, a razor, you know what I mean? So a box cutter, whatever. But I'm just kind of getting some of this rough stuff off. Like places like this, I kind of want to get rid of that brown spot there. I didn't like it. And you're kind of going around and looking at this thing and getting rid of some spots, making it smooth all the way around. And then you can take some sandpaper when you're done and uh, clean up and round off the edges right here, like all this spot here. Then we're going to tungle this so that it'll last... You know what I mean? It doesn't dry out entirely. I don't want this thing drying out entirely, so I'm going to tungle it, and that'll that'll hold in everything. And I'll show you that in just a second. All right. So I've got got my tungle. I need to attach this to here, and like I said, no power tools at all. I, it takes a while, but I mean, there's still some rough edges there, but for the most part, I've got it nice and smooth around here and then right there so I mean that's gonna look look nice when I'm done anyways like I said before you take your super glue use super glue you can use any type of gorilla glue or whatever you could just do this this will hold it in it's plenty it, it doesn't it's you're not trying to hold up a building or anything it's you, you get the point just drop it in just like that and then uh, that'll dry in a few seconds take some try and get some of this excess off yeah just like that get it all over your pants clothes face facial hair whatever so now I've got this. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a little oblong, but it's all right. I, look, nobody's perfect. I want to see you make one. Let me show me yours. I want to see yours. All right. Chaw. Chaw. All right. Let me get something to soak that up with. Ugh. Okay. Ready to go. Don't have to get too crazy with the tongue, okay? You're just sealing it up. But this will give it a different look. And it keeps it from drying out. Gives it a nice clean look. And now it won't dry out. And then when you need it, you scrape it off, the scrape off a section, and then start chopping some of the, uh, scraping the fat wood off of it whatever you decide to call it scrape it off and uh, strike it it's so basically it's a it's a fire starter fire starter right so there's your tender and then there's your there's your striker so you got it's all in one that's all you need like I said I'm not I don't need to go for a super glossy effect I just need to apply this and uh, they will fit in a 50 cal so you can do that number you could use that as your handle if you wanted to but but I'm, I just need that to hold that up for for a moment. So I got to make my lanyard now. Let me go get what I need for that. Cut yourself some leather. Get yourself some bag bomb. This is what I use because it softens it up a lot and it stays that way. Just like that. excess off my hand just rub it my beard that's what it's there for 
all over the place. There we go. Just like that. All right. Now I got this. Now I need to count out nine. I can do that this way. Just you can use whatever beads you choose. I get these from Jolly Roger. Right, how do I want these? So you come in backwards, head top of his head first, just like that. I go uh, the white one. I I like to do them two two tone colors so I know I can see better. It's just easier for me to see. All right, there's uh, that and that. So I do nine on one side and then I do five on the other. All right, we'll go ahead and run these through, and then I'll I'll let you take a look. Now when you get your nine, go ahead and run it through. Should go through. There we go. So it's it's coming to a dry now, so you should be all right to touch it a little bit. All right, so like this. Now I run my five. Okay. I use, like I said, I use five, not four. And if you want an explanation for that, you'll have to watch my pace counter video. All right, so that's how to use a pace counter. I'm not sure if it's called that or not. I think it's just called pace counter. Now there's your striker in case you don't have a knife. I want to put the striker on there. And like I said, this should be dry by now. It should be dry enough that I can fiddle around with it. But now down here at the end, I just need to bring this together. Just like that. And then, just like that. And then voila! Now you got yourself a nice striker now. You just bring these down if you want, however you want to put them on there. They don't have to be all the way up like that. I like kind of putting them at a certain angle there to give it a sort of look or space them out, whatever you want to do with the beads. But it has a purpose. This is to count your pace on a trail. You're trying to find a direction, getting up to three miles or whatever it is you want to do. And uh, this is for starting fires with. There's your tender. There's your strike. And there's your strike. So there you go. Boom, boom, boom. It all works together. I hope this helps, and I hope you like it, and uh, that's all I've got, so go make yourself one. There you go. You're watching SOS. I'm Stas RMB8. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic rainbow unicorn Darth Vader skull kind of day, and take it easy. And God bless. Take it easy.